the 7th day of August 2020. And today we're taking a little break from Seafarers of Splore because it's been requested uh, that uh, people might like to see a uh, more about F sharp in general because people don't know. And so uh, I like to do, I don't like to do projects, example projects that aren't games. So I, I opened up. There's this old book from years and years ago. Well, I'll just I'll look at it on Amazon here. So uh, his name his name is David All. He wrote these these books back in the late seventies, um, and I, I used to have I used to have copies of these. But right now, you can also get them for absolutely free on Atari Archives. That already basic games. I post the link. And these were old. These were the old um, type in line number basic things. But I figured all of these things are simple enough that. Uh, Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, so it's it's pretty pretty simple. Um, and they, no, it's, a, it's an image. This is a scan. So we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do an AC DC. So F sharp Windows. We're gonna play .NET Core, and we're gonna call you uh, AC. Do you see? How do we how do we spell that? Do you see? All right. Pretty sure that's not how you spell it. A C D C. This project we'll call you F Sharp Friday. And that's a fine thing to do. So starting naturally in Visual Studio, starting an F sharp, starting up an F sharp app is really no not any different. The boilerplate they give you is a hello world. I immediately yoink everything that is not that because this is the absolute minimal F sharp program. It is. Very similar to the equivalent C sharp, but we're also going to do um, add a new project. What we're going to do is we're going to do an n unit n unit test project. We'll call you AC do C. See tests, and with that, then we're going to say, "All right, well, what are we testing here? We need to add a project reference to ACDC." We say, "Okay." So then, this is these are the unit tests and test one. 
just fail. <laughs> so we're gonna re hey, Ruben, how's it going? It's F Sharp Friday, as requested. Mostly by you, I think. So as you as we go along, when, if if and when you have questions, do not do not be shy about it. So let's write let's write down a little blurb. Uh, okay, and try try to try to capture try to capture the, uh, the ACDC. AC do see and the kind of thing that goes on here is uh, the, the dealer the dealer deals to cards face up doesn't it doesn't really matter so we know the state of them face up just means we know the state of them player bets on whether or not a third card will be between the first two and um, player starts with $100 okay And well, player player loses when they are out of money. Okay. So then, let's take a look at the kinds of things. So, so this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Everybody understands this game, right? And so we're not going to need. We don't need this. But so some of the things that we're going to have to do to do, we're going to have to model a deck of cards. Uh, to do, model a, a round with two cards dealt. And to do, we're going to model a player with money. I'm going to um, shuffle, shuffle, deck, to do, I'm going to have to deal new round, to do, to display initial state of round, to do, uh, accept input from player, bet whether or not to I play or whether or not to bet to do accept amount of bet from player and to do evaluate uh, round outcome and so just lots and so lots and lots of things to do. Lots of things. We can start with modeling a standard 52 deck of playing cards. And I think that we just okay. So a we have a concept so we have our types so f sharp is all about types so we're going to go with um i need a type so in order to do a card so let's do cards cards and cards a card as a suit a card as a value right so this is what in F sharp a, a card suit would look like. One way to do it: type suit equals. And so I've got I've got a choice in in like C sharp. I would probably use 
than enum. And in F sharp, I will use something very similar to an enum. It's called a discriminated union. And actually, it's what it, it so it works kind of the same way. Uh, club uh, heart spade diamond. So now I've got my suit type. <clears throat> now later, if I want, I can I can say if I want to store value, I go let suit equal club. And so oh, I'm a suit. I'm, it's a suit. It infers its type. I can specify the type if I want, and very often I will do that. Now here's the interest. Here's an interesting thing. This is this looks a lot like an enum. It is not. In order to make it an enum, I would have to do this. Now it is an actual enum, but as you can see, it's like uh, we don't we don't know what a club is. You actually have to put suit club here when it becomes a real enum. But I don't want it to be an enum because that enum we can do enums and see. C sharp all day. Now you can specify this if it's that. You're also required to specify it if there's if there's a particular attribute you can put on there. So right now there's a suit. Now so that card has a suit. No real test to write here because it's we're just storing things. So type. Um, Called, called face value. It's a face. And actually, we'll call you card suit. We'll call you a card face. Now, I could go with whatever, but what, here's what I want to do. So, we're going to go ace, deuce, three, four. Actually, we're going to spell them all out. Seven. Nine, ten. Oh. Call you Jack. Queen, King. And now we decide. Um, so now we have card faces. So now an actual card, an actual card. Oh, the the pipe character. This is what tells me it's because I can actually also write it this way. This this separates my values out. It's really just like a new line because F sharp. Oh man, I think I have to do this. Yeah. If I want to, I can do it on one line like so. This is just how I separate my values, and so this is the syntax that. F sharp needs to know what I'm doing. So if I just put a new line, it has no idea. Treat it kind of like uh, oh, belly are. We're doing our F sharp Friday as per request. F sharp Friday, going through the basics of F sharp. So I could also do it this way, and this is a fine way to do it. And I think. Most people think, uh, well, it doesn't even really matter, does it? So, this is the, these are the two discriminated unions. Now I also go type card equals card suit card face. And let card, which is a card, be and this particular thing here says this is a tuple. It needs a suit and it needs a face. And the way that you write out a value of it is I can say, well, actually, let's put the face before the, before the suit, shall we? So face, because mostly, most of the time, you're going to say face, the face, and then the suit, right? So you're going to say ace of spades. 
Let's push put spades. Give it a name. Give it a name. Hearts. Spades. Times. Ace of spades. So now card is ace of spades. There are things you can do to get them out by name. I typically don't. So if I said let uh, face suit equal card, what will happen here is face will go to here and suit will go to there. So face right here, that'll be ace, and suit, that'll be spade. Um, so then now we're going to say type deck is a card list. Now list of cards, there it's not exactly the same. It's it's the see here the full name of F, the Microsoft F Sharp collection list. And this is a much more functional sort of list to deal with. It is like a singly linked list. Um so model the deck of cards, we did that. Model around with two cards dealt. We also really need the third card dealt. Model play with money, but we've got this stuff, so let's let okay, so let's model model around with two cards dealt. Now we're gonna make a record type. So type which is round is is the record type. This is one of the few times that we use curly braces. I'll do it. I'll do this on one line so I can so I can clearly demonstrate. So first card, which is a card. It's one of the times I. And from doing this inline, it's one of the few times that I use a semicolon. Second card, card. Yep, see, I even put a, I even tried to put a comma there because I'm just so unused to it. Third card, which is a card. This is round. It has these three things. Could I do it as, I could do it like this and do card times card times card, but really um, and really a thing that I want to do is I want to take a deck and I want to shuffle it so I want to and now okay starting to think I may wind up wanting to do these as enums rather than um, rather than a discriminated union. Don't know yet. Still on the fence. That's the thing. Trying to keep it loose. Nope, but I need, this needs a ETC tests. I need, um, need to add above. We're just gonna we're just gonna call you the domain. Not a module. You are namespace AC do C. I'm gonna move all these things into here because if right right here I have no namespace at all. Let's bring all this stuff and bring it here. And here we're going to And here we're actually going to, uh, other places like uh, other things like C sharp would have a using. This one has an open. It'll figure it out. I haven't saved it yet, but here is my AC DC domain. So at some point this thing's going to use use that. So 
one of the first things we want to do is we want to make a deck of cards. So let's make a module deck of cards. So deck. And well, we're going to make a module, but one of the, let's let's make a unit test. We'll call these deck tests. Now, a bizarre, a bizarre thing that's really useful for tests is I can do a double tick mark and a double tick mark. And so now this is a function name. Yes, it has spaces in it. Um, yes, it is perhaps one of the weirdest things, but especially for unit tests and sometimes other times, mostly for unit tests, I use this sort of thing. So I have like, um, so we're in module deck tests and we're going to have create and puts the periods in there. It creates a fresh deck of cards. And we're going to have, we're going to say let actual equal deck dot create. Now this is this actual. We'll, we'll do we'll do these things more on one line. We won't we won't put my style on it because so and we assert. Whoop! Hey, Marvel me, what's going on? Welcome into my area of grumpulence. Our equal expected card count. I will even say uh, an actual is going to be a card list. What we need to open a C D C. It's a card list, so we want to say let actual card count is um, actual dot length. So that's the length of it. I say let expected is 52. I'm expecting 52. Cards are well, card, the card decks are well known. Actual card count. So this is a good first test. When I make a deck, I can it. Also, also, all the cards should be unique. Do I? Do I want to check? It? Actually, I don't know that I want to do that. So at the very least, okay, card should a deck of cards should have fifty-two. So we don't have a function. We're saying, oh, here's a here's a thing. Create the create the deck. Let's go over here into the main. We're gonna make a module. Module deck is let create and returns a deck of cards. And we're gonna we're gonna bring in open system. The very first thing I like to do is raise not implemented exception. Deck, deck dot create. Sometimes I'll put no unit test in here, but so now this is a function, and this is a this is actually a type. It is called unit. You can actually specify. This is the shorthand. Looks like a void. It's actually u unit. So it will say exactly the same way. So it passes nothing. This is how you pass nothing not the same as not passing something you are pass it is nothing unit is nothing there only has one value which is unit really it's kind of like a tuple but with zero things in it that's that's my that's my views on it anyway so here we are so we have we're not going to we're going to call you we're going to rename you to deck tests
So now this compiles. So we do just the bare minimum enough to compile. And then we run and, for, and, we, and we watch the test fail. Now, and over here, in, in TDD land, we want to call the shot. We want to go, okay, wrote this test. Why, why, why is it going to fail? For what reason is it going to fail? This one's easy. It's throwing an exception and not doing anything. So, build it, run it. It fails because it because of the exception. It's going to figure this out, right? All right. Uh, build, rebuild. Figure it out. Up. Oh, you know what? Oh, I'm just gonna test on it. Why you know, why you know building? Oh, yep, you're a test. You're totally a test. Run all, where are you, run all? It doesn't find it. Sad, sad face. Go rebuild you. Nope, you've got to test it. Oh, you know what? Here we go. Watch this. This was not a function. There are some times where F sharp doesn't really help you. It's like, oh, it's that thing. It's like, oh, it thought it's a let binding. This is this was just an identifier to it. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. Because now, I'm going to build it, and that will show up. Up here it is. And you can see here in my deck tests, so it's create. It's called create, and it creates a first deck, deck of cards. But it doesn't because it throws an exception. So now, we've got a failing test. And now um, we need a bare minimum. Okay, well, let's be that guy. The bare minimum requirement for this. So we're going to say let card, which is a card, be the ace of spades. Okay. And now, uh, there's a shorthand. There's there's a way to do lists of numbers. So this right here really means a list of numbers one, two, three, four, all the way. You can do a list of numbers this way with semicolon two, three, four, five, six, and so on. You can do that, or you can use your dot dot syntax. So we'll go let the deck be number one dot dot fifty two, and that's going to be an int list. Now, what am I? What I want to do? I don't want. I don't. There's a deck. That's a card list. I need to convert these integers into cards. And in order to do that. I need to oh, come on. So I'm going to list dot map. I want to do a transform. List dot map takes a mapping, which is another function, and it takes Let's put out, let's say, what? Original list. Do this in fewer steps. Do this in more steps because that way it's more explicit. Because it gets very, it get, this is a part where it gets very confusing for folks who are not used to F sharp things. I've got an original list. So like, let, do let private, um, 
map int to card. Which is going to take a um, value, which is an int, and is going to give me a card. And it's going to give me a card that is just ace of spades, no matter what. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. So let card list equal list map map int to card and the original list. So this is my card list. This is a card list and a deck is a card list, so I really don't need this bind and then I can say, well that's what I want to return. So the bottom thing is always the thing that I'm returning. But so right in here, uh, don't don't need you, don't need you at all. So I have this let binding, I only use it here. I have this let binding, I only use it here. The way that I can do this is to say, well, I don't need that. I can just take that and this pipes it into here. And then that returns whatever that returns. So you have this, and then the pipe thing says, throw it over here. Take this thing, shove it over on this side. And that's how that works. That's, that's the whole pipe thing. And it's a lot faster. I can put it on the same line if I want. I can put this 1 to 52 over there. I can do whatever. But at this point, I like to put them vertically because I like to start with a pipe. That's just my preference. You get to code your way. So this doesn't have any red squigglies, so it means it compiles. And because it does uh, poop out 52 cards, this will cause the test to pass. And it does. Hey, Copper. What's going on, man? We're going over some F sharp things. We're going over some basic basics in F sharp. Because yeah, by request, and it's good to take a little break away from from the seafarers of Splore, just to kind of yeah. Sorry, uh, don't worry. Seafarers of Splore is currently broken because I'm refactoring. So as you, but also you can also see this value is a gray, which means it doesn't care. It doesn't matter what this value is. It's a dummy value, and you can put an underscore for that. But so okay, that test passes. But does it really meet the request? That doesn't create a deck of cards. Creates a deck of a stack of fifty-two aces of spades. That's not totally not what we want. So we go some more. So we say, all right, we need a new test. Let create. It creates a um, set of unique, unique cards. Uh, it has well, so it has. I don't know how to put this. It has no duplicated cards. So now I go let, but so my input, so let my input be a deck dot create. So that gives me what I'm starting with, and. We're going to assert our equal expected and actual. So let did unique card count actual unique card count. So expected unique card count is 52. Expect there to be. But let actual unique card count is, so I've got my input deck. 
And then fortunately there's this other there's this other structure called a set. Which works like a C sharp hash set. And I can convert a list into it. But right now it's a set of cards. And then I can also pipe that into a set dot is there is it count? It is count. Then I can go and count all the cards. So I'll count all the items. So because they're all duplicated, the actual card count will be one because it has only aces of spades. So this test should fail. And let's let's find out for certain. Here we go over to our test and we see here that our ACDC test it fails. It expected 52 but was 1. So we are correct in our assertion that this should return 1. And set is really useful for things like this, but I also use it for other things. But it's basically a hash set. So alright. Well then now I have to write the bare minimum amount of code. And I can't use this thing anymore. So this is not good enough. But what I can do is going to be a little bit wacky. It's going to look a little weird. So let suits be. We're going to make a list of them: clubs, hearts, spades. Diamonds. Spade, not spaces, spades. And let faces be. Really, I can take this. All the values here. Boom. Boom. Now we're going to replace. Replace all of the pipes with the semicolons. And just in the selection. And replace you all. 12 occurrences. So now those are all. So my faces is a list of card faces. Now what I can do is Let and then well let I don't know what to call it, but I'm going to take my faces. I'm going to map. And I'm going to list dot map. Map. Um. I'm just going to staple. Going to uh, make make suited card list. So then it's going to be that. So I'm going to make this other function. Now there's also a way to inline this, but I'm not showing that at the moment. Let private make card list. And this winds up going someplace else. Making the suited card list, which takes a card face. And it's going to give me something, but I need my suits here. And it's going to be a Actually, it's going to take that and it's going to return me a card list. So that's what we do. <clears throat> Actually, we'll leave this. We'll leave these types off for the moment. 
So what what it's going to do now is going to be a card list list. And so in a minute here, so we don't need this here. And then as it turns out, we also don't need this binding either. So we're really going to take this whole list of things and we're going to say map it to make suited card list. So I got suits. I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to do a list. Dot map staple suit to face of face. I don't have this function yet, but what it needs to do is it needs to return something. So we're going to do this let private staple suit to face. We have a face which is a card face. And we have a suit, which is a card suit. And now, the question should be, what's up with this? And what's up with this? These are curried parameters. Now, most languages have tuple parameters, so that you, you're used to calling a function like this. But in F Sharp, you can do this thing. Which means that this right here is a function that goes, I've already kind of, uh, it sort of works like defaulting, like default parameter. Kind of works like default parameters in reverse order. So go, every time I call staple suit to face ace, I'm going to take whatever you pass that, I'm going to staple it to an ace. Same thing for whichever. So it really is, this makes a, this, this part makes a function that takes a card suit and returns a card. And really the simplest thing in the world here is it is a face card or face suit. And there it is. So that's how you do that. Staples them together. All done. Makes this is a make a tuple, make a tuple with the face. So now, but now, I, this does generate a card list. But now, I want this to return a card list, but it doesn't. It does not. It's like, hey, no, no, no. This is giving me a card list list. So now I have a list of cards that are the list. So then, how do I take my list of lists and just on and make them into one one big list and that is with a thing called list dot reduce uh, which is we'll call it stable card lists and now stable card lists what private stable card lists first which is a card list, and second, which is also a card list, it's going to return me a card list, because that's what I want it to do, and then we should be all greedy and fine. As it turns out, there's an operator for this, so we say first at second, and this operator does add all of them. There are other more explicit ways to add things to a list, but if you have two lists, you can concatenate them with at. So at this point, um, we can look at this test should pass because now they should be all unique unless I miss something, but should have 52 cards still. Yep. Okay, so all the tests pass. So now we're green, everything passes, and so it's time to refactor, and these things are 
there's two. This is this is a little silly to leave here. This one's also a little silly to leave here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with. So I can just say use the operator, and that's the same thing as calling that function. The make suited card list. I will leave that one. However, it's not it's not needed anywhere else but here. So I'll bring it in. It does it's no longer private? So now there's that. And then staple suit to face. This is one where um this is a map of suit. Now I will show the inline way of doing this. We use the fun. Fun suit face suit. So that one, this one is, this thing's taking, this is a little inline function taking, this is like the lambda in, uh, in, in C sharp. So now I've refactored into a reasonable, reasonable state here. This, this is much more the way I would write it. We make sure that it's still. And we, it looks like we run, looks like it passes, look, we look like we're good. And so we've modeled a deck of cards. We did that. Uh, shuffle. We don't haven't shuffled a deck. So let's do that. So, all right, <clears throat> start with a test. So, here's the booster test. Let shuffle. It shuffles the deck, a deck of cards. Now, how in the world are we going to test random? We're not actually going to test random. What I need to know, so like let something about actual. So one of the things, so assert so the things that I do know is that shuffling a deck of cards, the the number of cards does not change. Um, which cards do not change? No cards. So there are still 52 unique cards. Um, and we're not even guaranteed that it'll be in a different order. And we're going to, we're going to use a deterministic one. So um, uh, when with a given random um, seed, a given deck will be produced. Okay. We start with let the deck be a deck that we create. So now we have a deck. And our let expected deck is going to be, well, don't know yet. It's definitely not going to be an empty, empty list. So 
that's what we're, we're going to go with. It's, an, it's empty. So we're going to fail because that, that's not the right thing to, to expect. Let actual deck be. If I take the deck, going to deck dot shuffle. And we need a random number generator. We are going to be a, What's going on? I will, uh, to, this is F Sharp Friday where I'm going over the uh, going over some basics of F Sharp. Just to kind of take a break, take a little little mix because it was per request and it's a fine thing to do because people are interested in that. But yes, I'll be right back to my uh, text adventure tomorrow. I need a random value. We need a random value, so I need a random. So let random. Let's see. We need open system. Now this is regular old system dot random, and that's how you construct it. And, but you can construct it with a particular seed. We're just gonna go nine nine nine. Doesn't really matter what the thing is. It's uh, this is a game uh, AC DC in between guts. Let's let's let me look it up, and I'm sure Wikipedia has an article on it. So AC DC card game, okay. Where in between sheets, between sheets, Maverick, whatever. So you have two cards dealt, and then you bet on if the third card is going to be in between them, because it's a simple enough thing where it's like, oh, okay, I get what the rules are, and it's it's. TDD and F sharp stream. Yes, sir. So right now we are about to make the shuffle. Yeah, and a lot of, lot of people like, if you have a deck of cards, like, oh, I got these two cards. How much for them being in between? Right? Right. Actual deck here is going to do that, and we're going to assert our equal expected deck and actual deck. Um, okay, so that, that's true there. Number of cards doesn't change. We're going to assert our equal expected deck. List dot length is it length? It's length. It's the same as actual deck list dot length. And we're also going to so that's that one. Number of cards doesn't change. It has the same number, same number of cards. And we're also going to assert that uh Expected deck uh, set of list. So we're sending it back to a set and then set count is the same as actual deck set of list and set count. Could we make each of these? their own test, it shuffled, but it shuffles a deck of cards. It's sort of a complete operation. I just use n unit and I just make my assert dot r equal. I'm really only 50 days in to what I did is I fully immersed myself in, in test driven development and found something that worked for me. So I don't, I'm, Eventually, I will have all the ones with the should not be's and all that stuff. But right now, I just assert our equal, and so I don't I don't have the nuance that a more experienced test driven developer would have. A person who's been doing it for years. I've been doing it for almost two months. Arbitrary imposed the test properties of programming. I believe you. And at some point, I will take a look at uh, 
I will be taking a look at those, but today's not that day. Now I've got a test so I can make the bare minimum amount of code necessary. Let shuffle. We have system in here. Random, random, and a deck of cards, which is a deck of cards, returns a deck of cards. And we will raise. I've been using F sharp for years. Um, one, F sharp is not an accessible language because it uses spaces as uh, as syntax. And if you're not if you're not a dot net person, there's not really a, a reason to go in to F sharp. I F sharp was approachable because professionally I code in C sharp, and so this is the okay. I could still make code that talks with my C sharp stuff. It's not quite that simple because um, you always have to make the imperative to functional uh, boundary layer, but I liked it a lot, so I didn't like going back to a, no, no it's, well, but the, if the meaningful white space is less accessible to people who are visually impaired, so it, it requires a fixed width font, and for people who have to zoom way in, so it's a less accessible language. It doesn't mean, it basically, basically means you have to have good sight in order, in order to use F-sharp. Same thing for Python. Python has the same issue. My eyesight is fine, got glasses, but fine enough to use it. But it was pointed out to me, so I, it would be remiss to go, hey, it's a thing. But the for me, it's all about the curried parameters. I can't, cannot deal anymore. Cannot deal anymore with a, I can, I mean, I will. I do get I get paid I get paid to write C sharp code. Um, curried parameters, curried parameters and immutability are are my jam now. Uh, deck dot shuffle. So now this compiles right compiles. And should fail because it explodes with an with an exception. But yeah, I was in uh, I was in C sharp Fritz's stream the other day, and he made that point about both Python and F sharp, and they are they are not visually not not as visually impaired accessible as they could be. We was like okay. Good. There, there's the reason I tell people don't you don't use F sharp because actually I tell people don't use F sharp. You, it will wreck you for other languages because curried parameters and immutability. <laughs> if that if you're the type of person who will be wrecked by those, but wrecked for other imperative lang the imperative languages for that reason, I am. I'm that guy. I'm like, nope, this is a better way. I like it. No, so it doesn't mean inaccessible. Less accessible isn't inaccessible. You can you can get to it. It makes it more difficult as compared to languages that don't have um, something like a like a curly brace to go. This is the beginning of the function, the end of the function. It's you only have one way to do it. And that increases the difficulty level. That is, I believe, the point. And also, uh, the the zealots, the zealots, the F sharp zealots are like like Haskell zealots, bunch bunch of bunch of functional programming dude bros saying, hey, hey, aw, thanks, ZV Durant. Do I want to be famous? I can buy I can buy friends. Can I buy some friends? That's really just followers. <laughs> 
Thanks for stopping, ZV Durant. I'll be sure to make make bell make make use of that service right there. But all right, uh, we're gonna shuffle a deck of cards. So now that's oh, all. Let's uh, let's do this. And then oddly enough, here's the. So how do we shuffle a deck of cards? We take the deck of cards. Oh, Searle's back. Hi, Searle. How was Germany? Or how is Germany? I don't know where you are. This dot sort but I'm going to sort the list. Now how do I how do I sort a list randomly? Germany is great, so you're so you're still there? Are you staying forever? Which part? You can just mention whatever the largest, biggest city is. Oh, I understand. Oh, flying back soon. All right, well, and enjoy your enjoy your holiday. To be sure, we've missed you. North Berlin. Okay. All right, so that places it for me. So over by over by Denmark. No, I'm I'm thinking wrong. That's where I live, everybody. Oh, stupid. No, okay, so over here. So, yeah. Oh, look, that seems like it'd be a nice. That seems like it'd be a nice. Over here. So, yeah. Okay. So, round, round about these things on the Polish border. Near the Polish border. Yep, yeah. See? It's 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 your reason to go. It's your reason to go home. Well, I'm so glad that you're getting getting your time to enjoy things in in the Germanys. But it's not quite. I'll just I'll tell you, it's not quite the same. It's not quite the same. Okay. Actually, this should do it. So when I'm sorting, I just need a sort function. And this is whatever the value is. This happens to be a card. But I don't care. All I care about is what, what the random value is. So here's a function that will just produce random value and it'll sort by that. Near, near Regan. So how is Regan? I don't know where Regan is. Let's look at, let's look at where Regan is. Regan. Vegan. Ooh. Oh, that looks like a nice vacation. Okay. So not not really too far from like Malmo, Copenhagen. That's nice. See that let's see the green stuff, so like east. So I guess I don't know the word vegan, but okay, I know that's East Re East Regan. That's what that word means. Vegan. Okay. Yep. And you could. Good old Regan. I'll never go to Regan. 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 Shuffle deck of cards. It should work. You should work. Oh, right. So 
what I should. It won't pass. That they would. It would. Actually, it does actually successfully do this. But what I'm, I'm expecting this. Um, okay. Bye, sir. All. Enjoy, enjoy your Germany. So now this should hopefully tell me which what the value has to be to put in here. And am I actually going to do this insane thing? I think I, I think I am. I think I am. Going to debug it because I'm going to actually get what is the value of the actual deck. Busy. Busy. Oh. Okay. Oh, it has no idea. <laughs> it has no idea. What's the first one? We'll just do a list dot head. We'll just say it starts with the first one, and we'll assume that we'll assume that random does what random does. And we're not even going to expected first card. Card. Expected first card. And this should be actually you can this one can be deck. This can be deck. Uh, so we'll go with let actual first card is actual deck. Let's dot head. Okay. Jumbo mouse mount with the live. Oh, oh yeah. Let's see, copper's all about the swag. Copper's about that. Pulls spades. Spades. Because I don't really know what the thing is. Let's debug it. Expected first card is Ace of Spades. The actual first card is the Nine of Clubs. So we're going to put Nine of Clubs here. Clubs. And now we should pass because it's got the right first card. It's got the right number of things so work you work so fantastic go back to our domain and we can shuffle the deck Deal a new round. So here it is. We're going to model a round with two cards dealt. So we've already actually already done that. We've modeled a round with the two cards dealt. So we're going to deal a round. And to do the test let's see. Let, uh, oh, test let D 
deal, it deals a new round. So we're going to say let shuffled deck be a deck that we create, and then we're going to pipe that into a deck dot shuffle with need a random here. So we're going to also borrow our friend random from here. But so now I don't want that there. Oop, nope, I do. Needs to be fresh each time. And that's Bram. So now I've got a shuffled deck. Then let expected round B first card is I don't know second card is um I oh, still don't know and the third card is again is of spades so sure and then let actual round B uh, I've got the shuffle deck I'm going to pass that into uh, deck dot deal round, and so then I should assert or equal the expected round, the actual round. So that is so now that's a function, and it doesn't compile because I need to make it just barely. Compile and let's go back over here and make a deal round. Let deal round. There's a deck. That's a deck. No, but the thing is, so this gives me a round, but it should also give me what's left of the deck. Is not implemented exception deck deal round, and that makes me think. So, if I wanted to do more than one round from the deck, I should get the deck back. Actual round, remaining deck, and I should also assert that R equal the expected. We'll go like let expected remaining and this one's simple enough where I can actually go because lists have the first one which is called the head and then the rest of it's called the tail so the very thing that I should have is if I have a shuffle deck dot tail dot tail dot tail dot tail. So this is what should remain after I've taken the first three cards up, two cards up. So the expected remaining and remaining deck. So those should be the same. All right, and we don't know. So we do know. I can do this without actually knowing any values. It does. I don't need. I don't need a particular random. So let random equal random. So this one is actually shuffled deck. The head of it. This one should be shuffled deck tail head and shuffled deck dot tail dot tail dot head and that's how that should go. So that's the the head, the head of the tail, the head of the tail's tail. And now we know.
feel round. There we have it. And our program still haven't done anything yet. Okay, never mind. So we're dealing around, and we now will will compile, but we will fail because all right, we're throwing an exception. And so it is. Dealing around deals new round. No, it doesn't. It blows up. All right, now we can go ahead and implement it. So, so indeed, and this one is this one is kind of cheesy because what I wind up doing is um, let round equal. Card equals deck dot head deck dot tail dot head. So I really do more or less exactly what I just asserted. And to do and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be not so, so great. Deck dot tail dot tail dot tail. So what happens when it has fewer than three cards is it will just explode. So this should pass it. And it does. So now we can go ahead. We are dealing a round. Cards have value. We did that. Deal a new round. Okay, that's that's the general description to do. Model player with money. There's money and round state. And actually what we're going to do here is we're going to evaluate the round outcome. Because we have we dealt the first two cards, which are the ones that we would show, but we are also already dealt out the third card. So we know whether or not um, we we know by we can inspect that by and whether or not um, we know if the we, you won or not. We can tell we know this state, we know this. But so, let's take a look at um, we need to be able to tell is this card greater than this card? And now there's a couple different ways we could do it. One, we could uh, So I've got to, I'm going to think about this for a minute because I'm in need of freshening my coffee here. But so the next thing to think about is how do I evaluate whether or not this card is greater than that card? Card suit, we don't really care. But we do need to go, is the card greater? And also then then we have to decide is ace the highest or is king the highest but i'll be back shortly Just 
I've thought about it in getting the coffee. And it seems to me that we care about card face values because 10, Jack, Queen, King are all valued at 10. And then we're going to model it in this way. We're going to go ace high because that's how most people pl will play this game. So what I need then is I need um, to have my um, my my values. I need a, I need a way to say, oh, okay, this these things have these values. We're going to have a different set of tests. This is card face tests. Here we call it card faced, card face tests. Okay, I'm gonna borrow the end unit framework and AC DC. Yeah, we'll even bring system in. Why not? We say let. Um, we're gonna have a get get value. It returns. Let's just be a test. It returns 
it has a it has fixed value it returns yeah returns the numeric equivalent of a card okay of a cards base now the thing in n unit that I don't know how to do is n unit tests and passing parameters to an n unit test I don't know how to do this in x unit objects into tests okay so test case source Okay, so test case or then unit test case source. B test case source. Let's look. Test case source. It is an object. Oh, test fixture. Oh, 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 oh. Nope. Okay. Data point. Oh, theories. I, I think I want theory. So, any unit theory. Data point, data point, data point. I want n unit three, right? So it the n unit three theory. Okay, good, good, good. This is what I want. N unit dot org direct. Why wasn't I just there? Ah, so much better. The data for theories, data point attribute and data point source attribute. Okay, how do we do it? Data point source as a theory. That's good. I'm learning. I'm learning something today. So, data point source is a data point source. So, data point source. Let's look. Let's look. Data points and you explain true and false for building arguments plus by all defined values. For example, let's look at the, let's look at the theory attribute. So we're gonna do a data point source. Alright, let's see how well this works in, in the F sharp. Or value, ooh, value source. I don't think I, I don't think that's what I want. I think I want data point source though. All right. <clears throat> and we're going to have values, which is going to be a card face times an int. Okay. Data point source. Let um, card face values goals. See, I don't know if it's going to let me let me do it this let me do it the way that I like. So we have deuce two. I don't know. Set that up and we're going to go and assume that's a let. Let the card face expected value equals values. So we have that. So we're going to grab that out. 
I'm going to say let actual value equal card face dot um, get face value or get value. Let's call it get value. That's fine. To card face, pipe that in to card face get value. I'm going to assert our equal expected value. Use the actual value. I don't have a curd face get value, so let's go make that in our domain. So we have module card face equals let get value, which takes a face, which is a card face, and returns an int, which explodes. Because that's how we do things. Card face get value. Now the thing that I'm not sure of, because that n unit n unit examples were totally written for um for C sharp. First let's see, do we compile? And then we'll see. Does it should explode. It should try to call this and explode. Does expected no arguments were provided. So I think this needs to be an array. Um oops, we can do it this way. So arrays in F sharp look like this. So I think does it get called? So that's going to be nothing. It never calls. Interesting. Let's take a look. Well, we're going to, to learn together. So data point source and unit F sharp cuts. Things always got to be different. The point source and unit F sharp. Test case source and unit. I might have to do test case source. But do I actually have a test case source? Form one, form two, where's form two? Must be objects. Hmm. Hmm. Morning, TBD. Good or good morning. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to say the first one. I don't want to pronounce that one. That I'm pretty sure I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Seems to me discretion. <laughs> so, all right, uh, this obviously works way better in C sharp land, but that's okay, and that's okay. So that was a good thought, and that's how you're supposed to do things like that. Instead. We're not going to do a data point source. We're going to do this. Actually, we don't even need to do this. For all these things, list.iter. Fun. Card face expected values. It gives me the exact thing. Uh, everything's des everything's designed for C sharp land. 
especially unit test frameworks. Although my my ability to put spaces in the names of my tests is an obvious superior uh, quality to F sharp. Besides, all things in C sharp. Shameful, shameful, shame on you, shame on you for your for your C sharp. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. Eleven. Three. Four. <laughs> absolutely absolutely they are um, they try but they change stuff so fast that uh, yeah no I'm with you I'm with you and that's what I do that's what I do at work work did you figure it out by the way Oh, of course. And you can't do that with ASP.NetCore. No, no, no downloading. Not for you. No. So then you did figure it out. Well, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you could just go, just grab it from the URL. Yeah, I suppose that makes a certain amount of sense that, yeah, if you're uploading images, it is just a blob. Oh, that's, that. see, that's how they do you dirty. It's and you're sitting there going, why, why, why? Uh, yep, all well, same code, but it's not doing the same thing. Not exactly. It's not in the same sort of context. And so, but still, no, you're. Yep, that's a table flip rage quit right there. That's what that is. So this should fail because all this thing does is explode, right? Yes, this explodes, but it compiles. So we're taking each of these pairs. Here's a card face. Here's an expected value. And explodes. And then... So then, in order to make this test pass, okay, this is going to be the first match statement that I do in this thing. So, match kind of works like a switch. It's actually a switch expression, and you go match blah with. I've become. I am. I am become F sharp. Today is F sharp Friday. Uh, by request of a viewer, I'm going over some of the more basics of uh, of F sharp because yeah, it the C first Explorer is not a very approachable code base at this point. But yes, I'm F sharp jitter Ted now. Right. I'll I'll shave just shave this stuff, shave that stuff off just right there. I'll have to lose a lot of weight too, but you know. Although I would, there is, there's actually on the roadmap a back alley where you can do gambling in Seafarers Explore. It's because you can't not have that. And it's actually this very game, but with a tarot deck instead.
And I was thinking the other day, you know what I really need? I really need pets. <laughs> Seafarers of Explore needs pets. Gonna start with the parrot. Gotta feed the parrot crackers. Cause Polly want a cracker. Three gives me a three. Four gives me a four. Five gives me a five. This is gonna be fascinating stuff. Six gives me a six. And I wonder what seven gives me. Up, oh, I'm surprised. Surprise there. Eight nine. Oh, nine gives me a nine. An ace gives me an eleven. And then anything else gives me a 10. So now my test should pass. As I'm thinking through the pets and the parrots, um, it's already been refactored somewhat into this idea where your guy is actually one of the shipmates. The parrot will also be a shipmate, but he will only contribute, he won't contribute any crew points because your guy is going to contribute a crew point because each vessel needs a particular number of crew points in order to sail. Uh, but there can be other types of points that it contributes because the, the, the pet could contribute morale points. And there's, and then it just gets snowball crazy from there. <laughs> Deliver this wonderfully fellow cucumber to Beardy the Dodgy Wordsmith. Mutiny of the Sp <laughs> the Mutiny of Sp Deers of Splore. <laughs> That's the sequel. The sequel. 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 Mutineers of Splore. <laughs> so I predicted, I predict that the test should pass, and it does. So now I can Now we're going to do for for our next trick I'm going to show a um This is this is a goofy this is a goofy thing. Just actually gonna do an is lower. Cause I I'm on the fence about how much I like active patterns anymore. Mm. Now nope, we're gonna do the active pattern. It's I'm not I'm not giving F sharp a fair uh thing. If I, if I don't do this. So card face. Uh, uh. This one is, is really difficult to unit test. Well, I... Here's test. Let. It so first I put or second or neither it <clears throat> returns first when the first card is lower. There's 
going to be a first, second, neither. And I'm going to say let first be the deuce and let second be the three. And let expected is first and let actual be third face dot um except match match first second with first let's assert pass and anything else assert fail this is hard to do test driven so I don't actually even have it expected so be first and this makes absolutely no sense at all to a person who doesn't do F sharp so I'm going to create this thing what's a it's going to return a first let's do it say let first and faces the first card face second card face equal we'll just always return first Everybody clear on this? It's an active pattern. Because we're not shameful C sharp developers. That's a C sharp developer shameful suggestion. Shame! I don't really mean shame. If you're paying, I paid my bills with C sharp code, but on stream, I always raz TBD Gamer with uh, imperative, pro, imperative code being. Uh, Okay, stop thinking imperatively. Also, I'm demonstrating C sharp, or I'm demostrating F sharp function, F sharp, how to code in F sharp. So this actually should pass. Actually, let's have it not pass first. Uh, raise. Yes, your, what you suggest is totally the C sharp way to do this. Now, should fail the test, make sure it's actually a test, and it doesn't know, and it doesn't really know. Will it actually compile? It'll compile. Should, it should fail though, right? Please fail. No, it passes because it has no idea. So it, I can't get it to, I, you could also go with the greater than and less than operators. Uh, the reason that I don't is because I've overloaded <clears throat> those operators and, uh, and paid for it. Look at me trying to wear and tear all these ones in the middle. That's why I use all this stuff. Um. Okay, 
so now my card face test. Uh, uh, I think I have to actually open this stupid thing. Module card face active patterns equal this. We're going to auto open you. Dare we hope? Let's, let's do this. Maybe. Nope. Don't you like? You don't like it. Nope. Nope, don't do that. Second, neither. Doesn't do a thing. Must be able to do the thing. See, this is, it's so awful. So awful. It is, it is, I do not find it very straightforward. There we go. It got the active recognizer. It's not going to have that. So that's the active recognizer. All right. So now, can I? Turns first when the first cat is lower. Now it should also return. And so, how's it going, Tads? Welcome to our little area of grumpulence. Being in the middle of grumpy. Because test driven development and active patterns. I don't use active patterns all that much. But so glad you could make it. So this one turns second when the second card is lower. Well, that needs to do second. But there isn't a second. Can I get it to do a second without actually having it return a second? No, I can't. Yeah, well, you you picked exactly the worst worst possible time. So if true, then first, else, second, just to get it to compile. It's like always return first, but it has to return second. Otherwise, F sharp can't deal. You have to return, why wouldn't you make it return all the things? I'm like, I'm test doing test driven development. Make it, make it stop. Okay. Uh, and again, and again. It's interesting. Yes. It is interesting. I don't reckon. Okay, and witty Ben. So I, I will. I will tell you up front. Up front. Resist F sharp. I also tell you resist Rust. There is a, an exception to resisting Rust. If you're a C plus plus developer, I recommend that you go learn Rust instead. If you're learning C plus plus, go learn Rust. but otherwise resist Rust. And totally resist F-sharp. No matter what, C-sharp is becoming enough F-sharp, or C-sharp is becoming enough F-sharp to do all the, to do all the cool things that you want to do anyway. If true, then do that. Okay, can we? Do we have your second? There's the active recognizer. So this should this should fail. And VB.net, once you once you understand, see VB.net gives you and also and or else.
Yeah, those yeah, the async code blocks and the let bangs and the and bangs and all that all that stuff. I look at that and I'm like, uh, that's swell for people doing the type of coding. The match operator is because switch expressions are more or less the match operator. Match first, second, win, second. So that should tell me, like, nope, I expected a. Returns a second. No, it gave me a second. Oh, wrong, it failed. Okay, so so that should return second. So I'll go over here to the domain. So if. Back during VB6 days, because uh, you can really see the early the early C sharp, the early need for C sharp coming out of out of Visual Basic, because it it was very very recognizable. Because I did VB a lot back in the day, um, but it was, it was obvious like here's what we morphed it into. But just the idea, people just didn't like. Oh, basic. We don't we don't code in basic anymore. But anymore. It's it's just sort of like uh basic we're cooler than that. So if so if Well, let's go. Let's go. Let first value equal first get value. Let's go do card base get value. Let second value equal second card face dot get value. And if first value is greater than second value, then we should have that. Yeah, the, the the real power for me, uh, curried parameters, which is what allows you to do partial application, which allows you to do composition, and the tendency towards immutability. Those are my prim the primary reasons that I like things. And now this should pass. Nope, it doesn't do the thing. Returns first when the first oh first card is actually it's higher. I'm doing it op I'm doing it wrong. Now it should pass. No, hey dude, uh, there's lots and lots of uh, stuff that was written years and years and years ago in VB and then it was carried forward and you you can pay your bills with VB.net and VB in general. There's actually still a lot of VB6 code out in production. So pay your bills with whatever language pays your bills, man. Ugh. And well, yep, you can you can pay your bills with VB6, but it's it's gradually cobalting itself. But here's the thing: there's like like with cobalt, which if you know cobalt, you can really pay your bills nowadays. Um, the the usage goes right down. So thanks for the follow tabs, gaming. It, the amount the amount of places where the thing gets used goes like this, but Within whatever critical systems, the the amount 
the amount that they pay somebody who's good at it goes bzzzt, you get <laughs> you, you can make bank if you know these obscure languages there aren't many jobs for them but that's one where it's like yep you can't you can't find the dinosaurs like me so you gonna pay is what you gonna do Anyway, all right. So these are all passing, and so I need one. I need one more. A card phase, so it returns. It returns neither when the cards are the same. It returns neither when the cards are the same. And so, we'll have you both be threes. Neither. Well, neither? What's a neither? Let's see if we can get this thing to compile. F sharp has an elif. this is still the equivalent but in order to get it to compile it all with that it wants that come on figure it out you're an active recognizer there you are so now that one should fail because it isn't because it returns second and not neither neither it doesn't return neither because and in the main else if the second value is less than first value then second so now it should pass because there's a couple of bulbs in your car you have to remove the headlight yeah that's yeah, I replaced my headlight bulbs also. I have a, my muffler disconnected from the exhaust, so I put some wire on it until I can get it in. It's still loud, but it's not deaf loud. It's not like deaf leopard loud. There we go, deaf leopard loud. That's, that's, tells you a lot about me. Okay, so now, Well, the thing is, it's hanging down, and the I don't want it to fall off on on the way to the shop. So I just wired, wire, wire, and so most of the exhaust gets into the muffler, most of it. But it's still it's brrr, rather than a so that's a there you go. Clip that. Where's where's uh where's Surly when you need it? That needs that needs clipping. Somebody get on that. But here's the thing. I know don't you don't use duct tape to uh, to reconnect. Thanks, TBD. Don't use duct tape to connect your muffler to your exhaust because duct tape is plastic. It can get hot. It can catch fire. Don't do that. Wire isn't going to catch fire. Probably. Don't use magnesium wire. Actually, why do you have magnesium wire? Why, why, and why are we talking about this? All right. So now we have an, the ability to evaluate um, We now have the should have the ability to evaluate whether or not there is a winner. I can now take, so I can 
Evaluate. I'm close to evaluating the round outcome. So yeah, okay, we didn't get done today, and I have, I'm going to have to get going pretty quick here. But uh, Ruben, if you're still here, which I don't know, because OBS has no idea who's anywhere, right? Who knows? Um, was this the sort of thing, or is there? Do you have do you have some particular questions? Because I got to go pretty soon here. That's great. That's great. Um, is this is this in line with with the kind of thing you were looking looking for? Is my question. And should we perhaps do this again? It's burr rather than blah. <laughs> so it's burr rather than blah. So that's uh, so perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm, I'm completely convinced that the job. We should do it. So, but so if you found this helpful, give give you some insight into. Okay, that's going a little slower. Looking at this is this is what this is what you do, and this is how you F sharp things a little bit. And very quickly you go. Oh, that does look so much better. We're left vertically aligned things. So I'm just going to clean up the code for a few minutes here. I will I will upload all I upload all my videos to the YouTube yeah, and I do hope and so yeah I don't know every Friday but perhaps like every at least every other Friday depending on depending on interest because yeah F sharp is has a bit of a learning cliff to get into it and it's it's not a it's not a simple thing especially for people used to imperative programming language and uh, get some. If you get some Haskell people, they're like, "Well, of course, we'll do that. of course." I'm giving a Russian accent because my the main Haskell programmer that I know of is Soding. But uh, love Soding smooches. But there's a you, you don't you don't be a so, so now we can see like, oh, that's why you align that. You align that, makes it read more readable. You're like, okay, I'm gonna actually, the alt key is your friend. So yeah, next, I think uh, next time, and then maybe I will, I'll probably have to put this up in a repo, I think. Yeah, that'd be a good thing to, that would be a good thing to do. But for now, I gotta gotta get going because I gotta I got I got stuff. I got things, you know, things. Let's look. Who's who's in the live coders today? Over size. There's Tim. Okay. Uh, reading. Nope. Well. Coding and something. See what's oh, in there. I'll go. And we can add. Video games. Nope. Video games. Nope. Oh, we're playing No Man's Sky. What? Here, because it would get into an infinite loop. I'm somewhat suspicious of this, but I guess I did it with good reason. No. E I'll do that. Okay. Alright, his. Okay. Uh, we'll go with Roswav. What are we doing? What language are we doing? All right. We're reading Roswav. So everybody, everybody go say hi. Be nice and whatever. Thanks for hanging out. Now get off my lawn.
Hello, Grumpy Game Dev. Welcome on in, Grumpy Game Dev. What were you working on today? Hello to you and all your people here. Hi, I'm Rosberg. I am playing around with some SSL issues in WebSocket. Uh, we have insanity, we have nerdiness, and we have debug today. Going over some F sharp basics. Cool. Cool. Um, I presume you're talking about the programming language and not 349 hertz. Demonstrating test server developers. Okay, cool. Oh yes, I do live in the future. It's um, 9 p.m. Friday. It's nearly Saturday here. <laughs> yeah, I can't defeat it. Wait. F not F sharp is at 3.9. F natural is 3.9. Okay. D is 392. Um, I want to say it's about 370 or something. Wait, what? Don't know what you're doing with your chat client? What do you mean? Three seventy, yeah, it, it's three seventy. Yeah. Do it, 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 do do it, 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 do